Um, another fantastic blog post that came out this week on Cyblogs is uh, Bridget Gallagher, who pens Digging the Dirt, uh, which is generally archaeologically focused in various ways. And this is quite cool because archaeology is generally about the very, very, very old. One always thinks, I always think sort of pyramids and brushes and dinosaur bones and things like that. Um, and this one is in fact about geocities. Geocid is, is, is pretty recent on the geological time scale. Um, for those of you who are not aware of it, it was basically, oh, how do I explain this? It was the internet for a number of years. It was kind of like the old MySpace and then became defunct. And as people moved on to MySpace and then moved on to other platforms, which they liked even more, and, and this will keep, of course, happening with human settlements, whether they're uh, physical, shall we say, or virtual. So what's happened is... This, this GeoCities platform, because it was all saved on the internet, has now been revisualized as, as, a, as a city map with neighborhoods and property sites. It's, there were 35 million people using it from uh, 1999 to 2009. So that's 650 gigabytes of information. It's one or two libraries. It's a couple of uh, hard drives sitting on your desk. It's, it's a not insignificant amount of information. And what they've done is, is yeah, so they've now built what they call the, the, the deleted city uh, or, or a digital Pompeii because the idea is that much in the, uh, much as you can with Pompeii, you can move through it. You can see how people lived, what they ate, what music they listened to probably the really stupid comments that they left on other people's blogs. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Bridget then goes on, because this is such a, an interesting uh, phenomenon, to, to say, you know, is this archaeology? Because it's so recent. How, how do we actually think about archaeology? Uh, so how old does something have to be to be called archaeology? Definitions differ on that for between oh, 111 years or, you know, maybe only a couple of years. She comes down saying that it's probably quite a bit less than that. Go and have a look um, and, and go and have a look at this digital Pompeii. It's really, really interesting. And I'm sure this will end up happening actually with a lot of, of platforms on the Internet. Yeah, it's uh, extremely cool. I think it was at the very beginning of my internet usage times that GeoCities was around. <laughs> oh man, people still make jokes about some of the hideous sort of the flashing yellow and, and black sort of backgrounds oh, and, and uh, stuff that makes you. You cringe. can still go and have a look at some of them. I think you know in various <laughs> caches and things. Far out there, ugly. <laughs> Right, well, now we're going to feature one of my blog posts, Yay. because I have not been on Cyblogs for a couple of weeks. I've been away doing other bits and pieces. What I have been doing is another podcast. I'm sorry, Amy, <laughs> I've, been, I've been slutting it up. Um, <laughs> we don't mind. I'd have so, joined in, I had no time. Um, my, my wonderful friend and companion from Kiwi Space, Haritina Mogusanu, and myself have put together uh, the global series of podcasts for World Space Week, because it's World Space Week starting tomorrow. Tomorrow, which will be the day this podcast comes out, so today, um, the 4th of October. And for each day of the week, we've produced uh, a podcast talking to one of these seven really interesting people. So we have all sorts of people. The first one is Dennis Stone, who's the president of the World Space Week Association, and he just gives a general overview of why we celebrate World Space Week and blah, 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 blah. But we've got all sorts of other people. We've got um, Robert Zubrin, who's the president of the Mars Society. Ooh. He talks to us about how... Um, Humankind should be on Mars within 10 years. We <laughs> talked to a professional astronomer from uh, from Chile, and he explains what it's like watching matter fall into a black hole. Um, we talked to the chief, one of the chief scientists on the Square Kilometer Array. We talked to all these really, really cool people, and they're, they're going to be posted, uh, cross-posted via Cyblogs as well. So keep an eye on that. Also, the World Space Week podcast, sorry, the World, Sp World Space Week site from... New Zealand, worldspaceweek.org.nz, um, has a whole bunch of events right the way throughout this week, right the way throughout New Zealand, of ways you can get involved with World Space Weeks. There's astronomy shows, there's public lectures, there's uh, cosmonaut Dmitry Kondratev is um, Skyping into schools all over New Zealand. It's just, it's the world is going space mad for a week and it's awesome, so get involved. Could not be happier. I, I, if I possibly can, I intend to join uh, Dimitri's webcast as well. You, you get to listen to a real astronaut talk, and if I remember correctly, he's actually up in the ISS and will be when he's doing it? Or is that not correct? I'm not sure. Anyway. He was in the ISS for the last one that he did to Kiwi Space, but he, I think he may have come back. Ah, uh, fair enough. Yeah. Either way, he's been up there, man, and he can talk about it. It couldn't be more excited. This may be my best week of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, slightly more terrestrially focused, uh, 
this week is also, in fact, tomorrow, well, today, when this goes out, is the New Zealand Institute of Agricultural and Horticultural Science, Inc.'s Forum. And it's entitled The Role of Agricultural and Horticultural Science and Innovation in the Future of New Zealand. It's going to be held at Te Papa. I imagine at least some of you will be there. And if you aren't, I would get to it. Um, so the theme is, is how we still seem to be what they say what they call getting by in New Zealand on the back of agricultural and horticultural earnings. And this is despite efforts over the last what, 20 years to transform the New Zealand economy to, to something different or to being based on something different. So the question the forum is asking is, could we be a first world economy, but one that is based on the production of high quality food for wealthy markets? There'll be some fairly controversial topics here around agriculture and the economy. Uh, yeah, go get to it if you possibly can. Cool, and that's pretty much it for us for events for this week, mm -hmm. um, and that's it for the whole podcast, I guess. But as usual, before we go, we do have to say thanks to all the people that have made it possible. So a huge thanks to Science Media Centre and all of our wonderful collaborators at Cyblogs who give us <laughs> uh, ideas for articles and things to talk about, and for producing all those posts. To Rian Shian for the opening and closing themes, because he's awesome. Um, and to Victoria for giving us the rooms. Indeed, check the uh, blog site, which is cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP for all the links that we've spoken about today. And as always, please do get in contact with any comments or criticisms, as long as they're nice, or, or anything else, or any ideas, if you'd like us to research something or answer some questions for you. Or if you have suggestions for Ig Nobels for next year. Precisely. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.